I'm Ben Maletsky, I'm uh, the statewide wolf specialist for Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife, and we're here today talking with some high school students um, from Washington State, um, talking about wolves and, and encounters with wolves. Not yet, huh? Mm -mm. I haven't either, no. You haven't either. I mean, that's the thing. They're a very elusive critter, they're kind of shy, so we don't ever get a chance to, to see them a whole lot. I feel like they only would attack you if they had a like pack of puppies or something though. If, if you walked into some, some yeah. pups. And what do you what do you think? Yeah, same. Probably like unless you're like threatening them, probably not. Um, you know, wolves tend to, to try and keep separated. They're pretty shy. They uh, um, there's very 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 rare that there'd be any encounter. Probably to like keep your distance, maybe. Yeah, they, you know, and that's that's a great way to look at it. You know, these guys. If a wolf is telling you that it's there, that means it's probably got something um, there that doesn't want you to go by. And we've had folks being escorted out by wolves, where the wolves will stay a distance, you know, 20, 30, 60 yards from those people, but they'll actually kind of walk along with that person, escorting them out of the area. Um, but you want to take notice of, of what that wolf is doing. If it's bark calling, it's saying, hey, you're getting too close to my space. We want you to go. And it's good to just back away out of that area and then approach them. I'd say I just keep walking and try to keep my dog from like um, communicating with it too much or like being involved with it too much. How would you do that? Um, probably like grab their collar and just keep walking forward. Keep them close to you, right? Yeah. Try and get them on a leash, maybe. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, probably, probably the same. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably keep them close. You're like trying to walk the other way. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's a good plan. It, you know, the um, those wolves are gonna um, might key in on that, and sometimes we've had you know a playful response if there's a dog and it's a wolf and it's by itself. Um, if it's a pack, it might be more of a territorial aggression type thing. Every once in a while we get a call of folks that are out hiking or recreating out in the woods and um, they might encounter a wolf pack. And so, in response, the wolves, since they can't move those pups, they're going to bark and a wolf is going to let you know that they don't want you there. Uh, if you are, are recreating out there and you hear that, then you're going to want to back away uh, out of that spot. Um, and try and just exit that area the way you came. You want to keep eye contact with those wolves, you want to stand tall, you want to be imposing to that wolf to let them know that they don't want to mess with you. If you're seeing that wolf, if that wolf is making itself known by a howl or by barking at you, that wolf is telling you that I'm not there to eat you, I'm just there because I don't want you in my in my house or where I'm, where I'm at, it's where those pups are. Uh, bear spray is is a little a little easier to use, especially in that moment that you're really uh, tense. Usually, a lot of motion. Uh, you know, you see a wild animal that potentially could hurt you. Your emotions are going to be elevated, and so when you get a bear spray, it usually goes out. And, you know, it's a spray, and it, it kind of fogs out there, and so you don't have to be pinpoint accurate with it. And then if, like say it's just getting too close and it makes you uncomfortable and you're trying to get it away, you can spray it and it doesn't kill the animal. It just now knows that the person's a bad thing and it, and it will leave.